Well, is this a tough trip or a tough trip? You guys are doing okay. There's stacks of tips in there, for goodness sake. Am I going to be able to salvage something out of this? I don't know. It's just... Well, I do know. Do you know why? That's right. Because I've edited the film. Did I salvage anything? Dear Graham, save the day at the last minute. You can have to watch the film to find out, guys. Well, still no bites, guys. I've had three, about three bleeps on that right-hand one. I, I've seen no bubbles at all. It's bizarre. I've seen one fish, I think, roll tight to the island there. So I've moved the left-hand rod out there and the right-hand rod here over to the edge and just put a bag over there. Whether it was a small fish or not, I don't know. The wind's starting in the background here, which tells me it's probably going to be some rain coming on the way. That is going in a clockwise direction. I never know if it's veering or backing. But what I was going to say is, because it's going to be a rough night, windy and that, make sure if you have these little cookers, which are brilliant, I've got one that stands up that I use in the boat. Mike gave me this one. It's got these low-level legs on it, you see? Much, much better. It keeps everything low to the ground. I'm going to be using this in the boat. It's got its own little sparker there. Give it a shake up because it's nearly empty. But open it up and... I use that as a screen but what I was going to say is you can get these things are really really light from a camping shop so when it's windy like this you do not want it anywhere near your bivvy they make a triangle and a shield okay I've got my spank bowl there ready to heat so I can turn this one this one seems to regulate a lot better than uh, Mike's other one down there like that I won't uh, set the camera light and it's lower down takes a saucepan well but also, the fact that you've got this around it to shield it, this tin thing, little support windshield, let's move that away a bit. The windshield, that means you can put the, tap, the, the power down here, so actually save, look, you can, you can run that a lot lower. I can get down to there, so the heat's not blowing away all the time. So get yourself one of those, they must cost like next to nothing. I assume they still make them. And fingers crossed, I have something to eat, and one of these rods takes off. I fear if I don't get anything tonight, we're going to have to relocate to another lake totally. There's a lot of guys, bivvy, 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 standing around, talking, nothing happening, no action, no whooping, shouting, hollering. And I'm in a pretty much what appears to be a dead zone. But that wind has gone right round here. Definitely, I think the rain is on the way. Anyway. Let's have some dinner first. It's bubbling already, guys. Look, see how low that is. If you can see how low that flame is there, that's going to start bubbling. I would think I'm doing a very good job of sticking that to the bottom of the nonstick pan. Meanwhile, dusk is approaching. The bobbins remain ominously still. And the buzzers totally quiet. And I'm talking all around the lake. Well, people, it's not often I get to bed at 20 to 9, but there's absolutely nothing going on, I hear. No splashing, crashing, cheering, whooping, hollering, netting. Camera flash is going off. I dare say it will happen sometime during the night. But you ever get that feeling? It just doesn't feel right to know it to me, honestly. I've not seen bubbling, moving, waking, foaming, nothing, just nothing. Bizarre, I wish I'd changed lakes. I'm set up now, I've got no choice. But in the morning, if it's not tipping down with rain, which they forecast, I will have to pack everything up, move to another lake and try the other lake. Listen, fingers crossed, one of these buzzers kicks off, but I really... You know, sometimes you just don't get the vibes, do you? You just don't get the vibes. As soon as I got here and looked at the fish, I thought, it doesn't feel right tonight. Something just doesn't feel right. It's a pressure, air pressure, whatever. Who knows? Maybe I was going when I didn't really want to go. 
because I was going place fishing and I was really looking forward to it and the wind got up. I thought, where can I go? I know, I'll pop down to Tobba. That's always a good shout. But I tried the big fish lake. No, it's not quite as easy as the other lakes, is it? Anyhow, see you guys in the morning. Finally, finally, I got a decent fish hooked up. I had one small catfish last night. It's now, I can't look. This is a catfish. I don't know how long the buzz has been going, but I think the fish is in the other lake. No, he's not. He's also off. That's good, that's good news, it's one of those days. That's good. So it's been a ball bust of a night. I have nothing but a one two pound catfish. Just have one big catfish on. And now, nothing. Dump me in the rushes. What a session. Hook sharp, it's just the way it is. I can't even berate Smith now. Hook's not that sharp. Oh well. You have to have a crack one sooner or later. Well, update this morning, guys. It is about just got half past eight. Not the world's greatest sleep, was it? So, total catch of the night one, two or three pound catfish, which I then didn't recall because I pressed the wrong button on the camera. Then, when I did press the right button on the camera, I hook a much better catfish and lose it in the rushes when the hook pulls out. I don't think there's much come out actually. I really don't think there's much come out. Just a couple of guys hanging around. I'm just going to move to another lake. And yes, the wind's gone totally in the opposite direction and it's now raining again. So I can't even pack up. I think the best thing I'm going to do is have something to uh, eat, have some breakfast. I'm either going to cash in and call it quits, or if it does stop raining and the wind stops blowing, just check out another lake to see if I can salvage something out of a disastrous night. You guys all know what it's like fishing. You get trips like this. It's just the way it is, isn't it? Hopefully I'll see you at the other lake. If not, I'm going to cash in and call it quits. That is not the view from the office I wanted to see. Well, I'm actually set up over at the other lake now. Well, I should have come last night, I should have moved, I should have gone with my gut feeling, I always go with your gut feelings, that's what they say. Quite a few anglers on here. Mushroom City down the other end, so I've just come opposite this island here. I've got two baits off the end of the island, this way a little bit because there's a guy around the other side, I don't want to interfere with him. And this is a sort of dead zone around here, there's all rushes, so I'm fishing over there on the left. I have one little beep, probably from an F1, something like that like that, a single beep. But I've also got on here, the smaller ones, I've got these small, I thought I've got to salvage something for you people, I've got to catch something for God's sake. 15 mil Shelf Life Pacific Tuna, I thought I might even pick up, I'm struggling, I'm only about to have ones, I might have to catch one. Save that blank. Well I didn't blank, because I had that um, little baby catfish about this big. So annoying, I mean I can't tell you how many times I've pressed off instead of on with the camera, but middle of the night, well, I wasn't middle of the night, I think it's about quarter past nine. But the wind has died off. I'm hoping the rain's gone away because I've just got rid of the bibby, bivvy and everything. I've just got the umbrella there. Most of these anglers around here are just day anglers. Quite a few down the end are obviously done overnighters. Got a bit of bread out. I fancy bread on the margins, floating crust across on the margins, really tight, but my friends, the ducks, are out there. So not much I can do about that. But anyway, I think just got to relax, unwind a bit and uh, breakfast and just hope, hope the fish haven't gone off in this lake and uh, I can pick one up. Ah, oh, beep on the other line. I don't mind if I'm getting small fish beeps, it's when it's absolutely dead and I'm in a dead zone where I was last night. That's what puts me off. And a few bubbles, I have seen a few bubbles out there. Bed of pellets, ground bait, ground bait first, then a bed of pellets and then scattered loose boilies and I'm just going to keep feeding that regularly.
guys, I was just gonna just gonna do a bit of a talk to you. I struck missed fish and hooked something else. Oh, I missed one on the other one as well. I'm definitely getting pulls on that Pacific tuna, but I think they're small fish. I don't know what this is, it's got to be a small carp, but I wouldn't surprise me, it's foul hooked. It's, it's, it's a bream, it just it sums up my day and night. It's a bream foul hooked in the tail. <laughs> Look at that. Is that not the freakiest catch you've known? Foul hooks, and I've got to get slimed, don't I? I was just going to do a talk. Pop him off. Well, I'll tell you what, at least I haven't blanked on this lake, have I? There he is. Little slimy beam, and put him back. I honestly don't think the little tweaks I'm getting and beeps are bream. I think I picked that bream up when I struck, and the... Uh, the hook went flying through a shoal. Anyway, let me get this back out and then I want to talk to you about something else. Been here just under an hour, but at least I've had a couple of beeps. Very quiet, everybody else. I heard a bit of splashing way down the bottom, but so many anglers here, somebody's going to catch one. Right, let's get this bait out. I think I'm going to go back. I've been using the uh, that PVA mesh bag with just boilies in there. I think I'm going to go back to the method I had here once before. I had some success. All right, good success. Different conditions, different time of year. I squeeze ground bait around the lead and I squeeze ground bait ball around the boilie. Let the little fish nibble that away. All that activity draws in the carp. Fingers crossed, Mr. Carp eats something. We'll find out. I'm going to try and get it fairly close to that tree. I've now got the umbrella behind me though. sink the line. That was right on the money that one actually. I don't want to move that. I might stumble across a method that's going to pick me up a carp. Just leave it to my for a second. It's time to rain again. So with the rain coming again I think I'm going to do a ground bait, double ground bait ball on this um, left hand one with a Pacific tuna rather than keep loose food and boilies in there. So I'm fairly sure the smaller carp are taking the boilies. Listen, people, if I don't get a fish by about 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon, there's a lake up the road, a match lake, just at the top on the way out. I think I'm going to have to look at it. I've kept half a loaf of bread back. I always take, you know, some of the white stuff everywhere. Unfortunately, the ducks are enjoying it at the moment. And just see if I can't pick one fish off there. But listen, hopefully I don't have to resort to that. But that would probably be floater fishing with one rod and just see if I can get a carp to, uh, to finish with. So I've had... Catfish, bream, and that's it for 24 hours. Wow. And there's a beep, as you heard it, no doubt. It's just a single single beep, that's all it is. It could be a liner, a fish bumping into the line. Just give it a second, I'll change it over and put a double ground bait ball on. Let's have this kitty in. And indeed, as you can see, <clears throat> the boil is still on there. So, here's my ground bait mix of which I have plenty. Check the lead's pinched. Just want to make, I don't want it too wet. Because I'd like to have it as a fairly rigid mix so that they've got to actually peck away at it. If you look, that's about the same size as the ground bait balls that I was. Uh, catapulting in earlier. This is pretty well doing the same thing as putting a bag of loose feed boilies in with a PVA bag, you know, doing the same sort of thing. It just takes a while for them to nibble away the ground bait for around the single boilie there, my hook bait. It takes them a bit longer. Very, very good for drifting. I did actually get um, a carp up on top on bread and then unfortunately, yes, the ducks saw it. I mean, they see the activity of those carp. They know they know what's going on. If they see a carp, I've done this before many times. If they are, let's get that clear. 
if they see a carp on the surface slurping away bits of bread, biscuits, floaters or any description, they soon rise up to it. There we go. Let's fire this out there. Had a good cast last time. Very, very close. This goes in like an absolute bomb. Not easy to cast. It's so heavy. Man, that was a sweet cast. That deserves a medal. Deserves a fish, I know that. That's it. Oh, it could be... Uh, there's, my, there's my old kettle, guys. I'm just going to start the fishing match. <laughs> All those matchmen are either pack up or cast. Yeah, I think it's the end of the match. Uh, we talked about putting those pegs up like this and then measuring around. Now, that's only any ever good, good for that one swim on that one day. For instance, if you told somebody, I caught off the end of the island in the left-hand swim at seven wraps, seven wraps of those, well, that's fine. But the minute you move those two pegs, they could be longer or shorter. You could be up the tree or you could be short. So it needs to be of a regimented size. You need to do it on the same size. So what they said they do, whichever rod you use, and use that same rod for measuring when you put the sticks in the ground. So that's point one. Point two is, if you're in that swim and you know you've had a good day, you caught a carp or maybe several carp at, let's say, seven wraps, make a note of it, put it on your phone. Swim number six in Smith's Lake, because you never know, Smith might have a lake, is good at seven wraps by the side of the island. Then, if you have a friend who wants to go there, you can tell him the same. He's got that information. He doesn't have to disturb any feeding fish, does he, that might be there, but keep continually trying to crash a lead in and out, trying to find that distance and get it just right. So, effectively, for, he, this guy was telling me in the shop that he fishes syndicate waters on all the different swims, they know exactly the number of wraps. Maybe they've got it written down or they've got it on their phone. Yeah, the number of distance, the number of wraps. So they just look it up and there you go, bingo. Oh, I'm in uh, the lodge swim and it takes uh, nine wraps fishing to the point of the island or something like that. He puts his rod down, same rod, 12 feet. Let's say it's 12 feet, doesn't have to be 12, could be nine, 10, whatever you use, just keep it the same. Um, oh, you got that down, mark it, put the two pegs in like that and you should be okay. So a few tips there anyway, but I thought it's very interesting how he said they just definitely, you know, the more serious carp anglers will register it in their mind or write it down to make a note of how many wraps for each swim. You don't have to do the same thing every time you go fishing then. Makes an awful lot of sense, doesn't it? This does not make a lot of sense. Hardly any sleep, hardly any fish, still no fish really, and it's raining and then getting cold. That doesn't make sense, does it? Well, you can see what's happening now. The wind's coming from the left. The rain's getting hard. I've got to watch the camera here. And what I've got to do is bring the umbrella forward. Might even have to tie it down here somewhere. The only thing I think, I'm sitting under the umbrella, I'm not wearing my new best friend. Should I put the lucky awesome hat on? When I think about it last night, I don't think I had it on. It doesn't work all the time. I think I put it on. I haven't had it on because I'm under the umbrella, obviously. If you're a bit stupid with a hat and an umbrella, I'm going to stick it... <laughs> I just literally put it on my head and it beeped. Can you believe that? See, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you just got to have a hunch, you think. I wonder if I take it off, might be lucky, give it a rest, it might need a rest. Another time you think, I'll just put the hat on just in case. I mean, I put the hat on, don't worry, it's staying on now. And I had a beep straight away. Mind you, it hasn't stopped the wind coming up and it hasn't stopped it raining, has it? It's not that lucky. Update time, guys. The rain has, well, it's stopped for a little while. It's remained ominously quiet. I've had one beep. I just freshened it all up. I put four or five ground bait balls out there by the island and another three over there, four over there. I haven't put any more loose feed out there because I'm not getting the beeps and buzzes. So I don't know whether they're going to be eating all that or not. So it ain't looking good and the time is quarter to one. 
man, what a session I'm having. We all have them. It's like a blank. And listen, <laughs> if you worry about blanks, don't ever become a beach fisherman in the UK, will you? That's the thing to do. I've had a lot of beach fishing. I've had a lot of blanks. If you think you're tough and you can take the blanks, buddy, get yourself some shore gear and get on the south coast of England. It's lovely. Honestly, here I am at a carp water that's packed with carp and I can't even see one moving. The guys over there just casting out, rebaiting, same as me. Gentleman down there. It's just so quiet. It, the temperature, I wash my hands in there. The temperature's really, honestly, the temperature's really fine. I don't understand. The temperature's good. But there's a cold front coming through. How do they know? Is it a pressure change? I don't understand it. I'm only going to give it till two o'clock here and then I'm going to hit that match late. I'm determined to try and catch you guys a fish. If it's not going to happen here, well, <laughs> this is this is the premier lake for me, fishing this uh, this one at Tobba. But it obviously does have its off days, like all fisheries. Anyway, I think it's time for lunch, which will be ravioli. Hmm. Makes you want to go home to the wife. Not so bad, is it? Nice big roast dinner. Even a lucky hat doesn't seem to be quite so lucky today. <laughs> well, have you heard that term? Last chance saloon. Third time lucky, that sort of thing. Well, it is because I've now come up to what I thought would be my banker, and over there is a huge match on. So I can't fish either of those two lakes. There's a tiny one here, which is like a, a fun pool or something like that. It's a match one, just a, a lake with two islands in it, guys around it. So many people fishing, it's unbelievable. I'm going to put some floaters out. I'm going to be catching absolutely anything. I don't care what size it is. One pound, I've got to catch something. I've got two rods out already, feeders, but I've got a feeling floaters and fishing in the margins might be good. So let's get some bait in the water, guys. See what comes up. There's a load of ducks on here before. I do see one or two fish moving, though. If I could get them feeding, I'd be in with half a chance. Now I've got to change rigs. I've only got... Well, hang on, I'll just chuck some bait in close and there's a... I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stick with a head cam, people. I'm just going to stick with a head cam. I've got my boilers in rigs, but i just got the feeling, although I've got two out there, nothing happened. Now, these are Proactive Health Puppy and Junior, 24-old, month-old puppy, whatever. They're Michael's when he had a puppy. So I'm going to scatter a load of these floaters out this side because the, the slick side is this side and I feel nobody else does this people I don't think many people would do this it's a match lake they're going to be sort of fishing on the pole or on the feeder or something like that and I reckon I could chum a load of fish up here these match waters generally could be quite good I've got some bread as well um, I'm going to put down just these loose squatting pellets now look how stupid this is I've been bailing some in there and I can see a big mud patch there already and there's fish coming up so yes I think I'm going to save the, the dreaded blank I'm going to give him some of my expensive pellets as well not too many because I want some for barbel fishing coming up oh look at these carp coming up oh, yeah we're going to save the blank here all right guys the thing is all this all this little and often feeding I find Whoa. We're on. Are we on? Oh, I'm on, boys. I am on. Did you hear that? That just was absolute belting screamer. I don't even know what it was—a pop-up, a boiler. What the, what the hell that was? That's the single tone I've been waiting for all my life. <laughs> oh, look at the fish I got feeding on the surface. There we go. Small carp. Fun carp, guys. Fun carp. Back the, back the drag off. Back the drag off, see if we can save the blank. Oh god, have I got land in there? Oh man, I've got so many fish feeding there. See, there's matches up there. I don't understand why they don't use floaters. I don't re it's beyond me. Let me get this net the other side of me. What a good job. 
I kept a load of that ground bait back. Oh, he's come off. <laughs> what? Get in the net messing around again. Fear not. It's going out again because that was a nice screaming take. Ball of ground bait and look around the lead. I've made it a tad wet. I'm sure they're not bothered at all. There we go. I'm trying to keep that head cam on it. It's just so muddied up down there. It's ridiculous. I don't even remember where I cast. Out there somewhere. Bosh. Probably over that other guy's swim that's why it took off. If you feed this enough, you could probably get fish taken on the drop and with a feeder here. Pretty sure you could do. I'm fishing out quite quite tight. I'm going to put a couple of balls of ground, mate, just off the end here. I might as well get rid of all my bait in one go. Right. Well, trust me, that was a fish, guys. That would have saved the blank. Now, who knows? Right, I've got to get a single hook on. I'll take that rig off. i take that rig off there and just put a single hook on, I think. I don't need all this. See, look, the bolt rig boiler business, pop-up floaters, snowmans, Eskimos. Don't need any of that in this lake. Yeah, there's fish coming up there. See, I can... I could look around for a decent sized one there, hopefully. They're not going to be big in here, you know. It's for uh, match fishing. Well, generally, these match lakes are very well stocked. Oh, look at this carp here. That's not a bad fish, holy cow. That's not a bad fish in there. I'm starting to put all my tag ends and nylon back in the bag here. Part of the save the plastic going in the ocean stuff you keep reading about. Got to do your little bit, yeah. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Nearly, but not quite. Might want to come back on that drag a bit. For so many fish, it could be liners as well. I'm getting beeps on this one all the time, that one I chucked out with a ground bait ball around it. Do I go for a biggish hook? Is your tackle box a mess like mine? Delve into here, get myself a trusty piece of frozen. I met a guy in the uh, car park of that lake I just left, the bigger, bigger carp water. He done okay, he said, uh, in the margins. Oh, look, there's a fish right there, right there, people. Right there. Give him. I'll save the crust and I'll, I'll throw the bits of white in like this. I'm going to try and get this one chummed up in front of you. Oh. The thing is, if there's loads of little one pound ones there, it's finding a bigger one that's going to be the problem. Oopsie. I'm on boys, I'm on the boily. That's right out there between the island and whatever that thing is out there. Come on, come on, save the blank for Uncle Graham. There's one or two fish look around about five pounds here, but I, I sit the majority of them are going to be uh, smaller fish. I'm going to put my weigh mat over here. Fun fish, but do you know what? Even here, look, he put a good bend in that in that rod. He's lost in the net. He totally lost it. <laughs> He's lost in it. I we'll probably won't even find him. They will grade these out when they get bigger. And that's a nice looking fish, isn't it, that one? Quite pretty. Sliding back. Save the blank on the carp. One catfish, one bream, one carp. Well. I'm on fire. I think, do you know what? I think I could get fish 
Let's put a little bit of ground bait around that boilie. On that loose feed close in. Just lowering it literally. Literally like this. Under the it's about a foot deep there, people. Come away from the swim, I don't want to drag the lead through the swim. Oh yeah, it's fish on that. Look, see I've got a nice got a nice pink pop up there. Oh look at the, the boil on the rod top wind. <laughs> Gotta laugh, haven't you? I'm gonna take this pop up off there. Well maybe I'll leave it on. What do you guys think? Smith, what do you think? Let's just try it. I'm saying it I might have been casting it in the wrong place. Let's just try it under my feet. Give me a bit of ground bait first. Come on. Maybe they don't use pink here, the match one. Maybe they don't like pink, look. I don't even think I need to bob in. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of... Uh, Plenty of fun sized carp in here for sure. Look at them all over the surface. There's a decent one. Right there. Oh no, look at that. <laughs> Hopefully the camera was on then. Under your feet. Get them chummed up. And you can you can catch them. all that night waiting for one big 20 pounder and I could have catch eight of these which would have added up to 20 pounds strange old world this fishing I should think a lot of these a lot of these are the smaller carp that they've netted from the big carp lakes so they said they'd take out one lake, I think they took out, wait for this, nine tons of small carp. I think it was those F1 things. Let's just hope they don't invent an F2 and an F3 and an F4. Little front fish, back he goes. They're still taking a bolt rig, it's bizarre at like that size, isn't it? Well, I don't think I need any ground bait. <laughs> oh, one hit the line then. That's about a foot deep there, people. Pull my polarizing glasses so I can see which of the bigger fish. I think there's one over there. You can see where I am just out there. They're drifting out a bit farther. Oh, there's a nice one. Let's have that one. There. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, fish on. Oh, got one on the bread. Got one on the bread straight away. He's digging, he might be three or four pounds. Oh, oh my God. This one's going to crank off, boys. This one's going to crank off. There he goes. Look, 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 look. I'm going to play this one. Oh, I'm fighting him out. Just watch the rod top there on that one. I'll try and keep my head to the right. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. He's been eaten by a tiger shark. The heck is that? I thought they only went about three pounds in it. Well, that's interesting. That one will have to look after himself, I'm afraid. I better take a look at this one. It's off again. Good lord, I've got a fair bit of pressure on that. It's on my car, bud. What the... What the heck? Blooming heck. What's going on? What the... 
the fish looked about three pounds, four pounds when I hooked this. I've got a job stopping it. You mean to tell me that I've sat up for the last 30 hours right the way through the night on this new lake that I've never fished even before? I walk up to peg number 88 and I hook a fish that's better than anything I spent spent the time for looking in the big lake. Look, look, what's going on? I don't understand this. I need to see this fish because I have got a fair bit of drag on that. Unless he's fouled, is he fouled? Even so, he feels like he's decent size. I've got to change that pop-up. They're definitely not stuck on that uh, pink pop-up. Come on, I'm going to have to stand up and look at this fish, people. I'm getting really intrigued by it now. It's got to be over six, I'd say. Yeah, it's just going well. It's common. I'm going to come on back. Mind it, it's a slightly better fish. I will say that. Oh, no. Yeah, he's all right. I thought it was strange. I have to open this out in a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, damn <laughs> What did I just... I thought that was strange. People. Eh? That's bizarre, isn't it? What a funny old world it is. Look at that one. There we go. Just goes to show you. Stop it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's silly. That's a nice carp. <laughs> I mean... Well, I've learnt something again. I've learnt there is another lake, a topper, that looks like it's even with fish. They've had that bait off, so the side hooking doesn't work. It looks like I'm going to have to rig that one on a hair rig again. I've got these two out, boys. Boilies on the bottom. I'm going looking for another reasonable carp. I'll tell you another tip I find. If you put too many floaters in, you'll get the small ones coming up. You won't be able to isolate a big one. My problem is I've got the glare from the light up there in my eyes. So I need to try and pick one off here. Look at this one. I'm going to film that close in. I wonder if you'll take again. I don't know if you saw that one come up. I feel I want to go down that way a bit. It's just a little bit too much colour in the water to see them with any sort of advance notice. Down there. Okay, I think I see him there. Keep down. Look, 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 look. Got him. Got him, boys. Hope you saw that on camera. That was as sweet as you could get close in. He's going nowhere. Not as big as that last one. Could bend in the rod. Could bend in the rod. I think I should be in one of these matches. Mind you, I've got three rods out. That's what I like about the OAP, the licensing system. I think it's about 30 quid odd for a, a three rod and I don't really use three rods, generally a pair is enough. But I suppose you think it would give you 50% extra catching ability having that extra rod out, but it doesn't in fact. Sometimes it can even work against you. you. You can fish one rod often better than you can fish three. Here he comes. Yeah, another common. My goodness, how it turns around, eh? Third lake, third try. Third try. What a good job I kept some bait back though, eh? Do you know what, boys? That's another nice common carp. I thought there were small fish in here, they're not. Look at that one. Huh, he's going and going. I think he's going to go. Sevens or something like that. That's a nice car. Oh. Well, we finished okay. A couple more and I'll be on the way home. Now I've thrown the uh, one rod out there and one rod out there. 
both with Pacific tuna boilies on the bottom and nothing at the moment. One big hook up on this didn't come back, so they light the ground bait. I'll give, I'll give them a bit more here. See if we can get one of the rod top and a sort of a, a crash take. Just to show you how close. I do like margin fishing, I have to say. You just see that rod fold over. Get yeah, a great take. A few more dog bickies for them. Look, people, I don't go anywhere, whatever carp. If I'm fishing for big carp, well, actually, I was fishing for big carp last night in Kitchen Lake. But wherever I go, always take some bread. Everybody. Just look at what they cost. Sometimes you get them for 30, 40p on the discounts. Just always worth having some bread. You can fish it on the bottom, you can float fish it, sink in with paste, you can make paste of it. Look, look, I mean, you, you can chum fish up, they come up on the surface, you can pick off your fish then, get the bigger ones. And I'll keep the crust back, i keep that back, and I've, I think I've told you many times before, you want to cast it, you can do it better, or you'll get more pieces per slice out of stuff like the crust, and this is not the world's greatest crust, by using a pair of scissors rather than breaking it with your hands. That was a nice swirl, people. Like this one, two, three, four, five. Then there's a little bit of broken hinge of bread, and obviously don't waste it, it goes in. Keep these back. They're really banging these rods. <laughs> really banging on them. Couldn't even get the crust out, people. Couldn't even get the crust out. Man, this little lake is heaving. Anybody who wants to come, I'll tell you what this is good for. This would be an ideal place to come if you're starting carp fishing and you want to use the bolt rig and get used to the takes. This would be an ideal lake to come. Especially youngsters, anything like that. You can get an idea how to make your your rigs up, how the different rigs work, loads of different stuff. And look, you're going to get action, hopefully. I can't speak for the winter. I can speak for the fact they fight pretty hard in here. I don't know what size this is. Probably not. Oh no, oh no, I've got a beeper on the left. Yeah, this would be ideal, ideal for youngsters coming if you want to go carp fishing. If you go in the tackle shop here at Tobber, they can show you all the rigs, all the different boilies, the way to hook them, the snowman rigs. And if you come here and catch a few carp like this, you know, you'll get uh, you'll get better and then move on to the bigger lakes for the bigger fish. But all this, if you do this, I'm on a carp rod, obviously. Do this like an Avon rod, which I normally do. Get some great sport. Look at the bed in the rod. Tells his own story. Wow, he is hyperlooping the hyperloop. There we go, got him. Long thin one, looks chubby this one, looks like a chub. And even greater, I can use the boilie again. Looks very much like a chub that one, doesn't it, the scales? Back he goes. Doesn't seem very deep out there. I'll get it tight, or wind up tight, put the bait run on, always check the bait runner. Now when you bait up, like I am doing here close in, they swirl around a lot and stir all the bottom up. And there's every chance you'll get a big fish coming up right on the edge of the margin here. I can almost, almost see one I could hook by hand. Watch this people, just watch this. I feel if I creep down here, see there, I've baited up just down here. They're digging and swirling around, and some of that washes in the side here. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put some uh, some bread in there, see if we can't bring one. Oh, there's a better fish. There's a better fish, here he comes. No, it, that one turned off. I'll see if I can get some either side of that tree roots and bits of bread, and we'll see if we can't catch one for you. Now, this is totally the reverse of what we did 
when I showed you about the casting, not so much distance casting with accuracy, this is the reverse, because there's casting, but don't think there's just casting, because there's something else called catching, not just casting. A lot of youngsters tend to get besotted by casting. Well, trust me, there's casting and there's catching, and we'll shortly show you, hopefully, just how close you can get carp to come. Just gotta keep uh, still. What I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to take that bolt wig off and freeline it down there. Look, we're on baiting, look. I can't get any closer, can I? I cannot get any closer. Oh, there we go! How close was that, people? How close was that? Under the rod top. There is one reasonable fish down there. It looked a very good size. I did see digging. I don't imagine we got him, but this feels pretty heavy. There he is. That's not a big one. Good scrapper there. Now look at these fish that come up on the inside. So it's well worthwhile keeping a bit of bait back. 